Have you ever heard a case of the blobbies? Life stinks. Oh. Tavish. Tavish. Not home. Tavish. What do you want? Oh, is someone in a bad mood? Please, cheery. Buongiorno, Tavish. He's Italian. I am Philip Nyari. Patron Saint. Just came right in. No invitation, just... Plop this jolly cheeks right on my couch. Also, it was freezing that day. And dear Philip, Oh, Phil, he just comes prancing right in. Not a care in the world, dressed all in black with this white collar and these big floppy white shoes. This doofus looking hat. No coat, could have been a summer's day for all he cared. And get this, half his beard was gone. That would be too far. Upon entrance, this great one came in with him. Now, I'm not talking like, oh, he loves you so much, he's so warm and cuddly. No, no. I'm talking about like, bro, remove your cheeks from my couch. You burn a hole in my cushion. Sit down, Tavish. And all this time, I hear this noise. No idea where it's coming from. I hear you take people's stories. Very good then. I was born in Florence, so minor nobility. Yet funds were limited due to my father's hobby. Alchemy. He was into alchemy. I was not an ambitious man. I was perfectly happy living in my friend's house, tutoring his children, doing my spiritual exercises. Then, Rome got sacked in 1527. Was it bad? Oh, it was bad. Political powers were dancing. The Holy Roman Emperor Charles V was in league with the Spanish, thought Pope Clement VII had too much power. Pope Clement enlisted the help of the French. The French lost to old Chucky. Old Chucky was flat broke. Didn't pay any of his soldiers. 20,000 plus mutiny. It was madness. Pope Clement fled to Sant'Angelo, and here, that doesn't seem very brave. There was 14,000 howling German Protestants beaten at his door. And you know what the Protestants? Not too fond of the old papacy. He had to ransom himself. 400,000 Ducati for his life. Between 6,000 and 12,000 people were killed. Plague hit the city. Population dropped. It was a complete mess. What did you do? What could I do? The city was in decay. Spiritual life at an all-time low, it was chaos. So, I made friends with the riffraff. Interesting people, really. You never know who you're gonna meet on a street corner. Anyway, the reason I'm here. Bumped into Jude Davis a while back. Rather enthusiastic chap. Very. He mentioned that there was a quarantine on, and people may be getting a little down. Cannot abide that. Cannot abide that. So he told me to swing by and uh, give you my card. Huh. Ciao. There he went. Just did a Mary Poppins right out the window. So old Tabs did some digging. And uh, turns out, Signore Philippe Left out all the good stuff. Story time, story time, we like to hear a story of mine. Story time.
Come with me to hear a story of mine. Numero uno. It was the eve of Pentecost Sunday, 1544. It was dark and probably stormy. Now, Signore Philip was down in the catacombs of San Sebastiano, doing the only to floor routine. Praying. He was praying. He was begging for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, all of a sudden, this ball of fire just descends down and enters his mouth. <laughs> it makes a beeline straight for the old ticker. Apparently, Philip Neri didn't feel any pain, but the love was so intense that he collapsed to the ground in ecstasy, crying, Enough, enough, Lord, I can take no more. Sounds intense. When he finally became fully conscious, his heart was swelling almost out of his chest, just <laughs> pounding against his ribs. Four effects remained with him for life from this event. Effect one. Excessive heat in his lung cavity. Dude will only wear the lightest clothing, even in winter. Of course, this, uh, as you imagine, this uh, concerned some of his younger pupils, especially when he was getting on in years. I mean, can you imagine winter nights? Oi! Oi! Paolo, the portrait is praying outside in his nightie again. Yet, whenever they touched his skin, it felt like he was sitting next to a crackling fire. Effect two, severe shakage. When Philip Neri would become absorbed in prayer, his body would suffer tremors. Now, I'm not talking like little shakage. I'm talking about like he had to keep his elbows firmly planted on the altar during the consecration to keep the chalice steady. I'm talking like his pupils would come pray with him in his room and the entire room would be like Earthquake. Spooky. Effect three. Heart palpitations. When people would come to Philip Neri with deep fears or troubles, he would simply take their head and press it against his heart. And this soothing sense of peace would flow right into their souls. Truth. After Philip died, doctors performed an autopsy on him, and they found that his rib cage was unnaturally arched, and the two ribs over his heart broken outward. Effect four. This one didn't happen as frequently as the others. <laughs> Thank God. Philip's body would mysteriously swell up, especially when he was trying to prevent an ecstasy. But one time, he heard some distressing news from Florence, and so he walked into his chapel, started praying, and um, fell into an ecstasy. And witnesses say, and I quote, he swelled up like a cask, brings a whole new meaning to stuff like a sausage. Also, sidebar, countless people witnessed Philip Neri just levitating during the Mass. Not really sure how this uh, worked out with the whole uh, shake thing. Uh, I guess God sorted that out, but the dude was in the air! Of course, the good signore downplayed anything supernatural. Probably why he up, up, and away without telling me squat. Just zip the lift and sail the ship! But that leads me to numero dua. Do have a sense of humor! To avoid ecstasy and, you know, sausaging during the Mass, my man would either read a book of jokes or play with this little pooch. <laughs> and the sacristy before mass caused quite the scandal to visiting priests, let me tell you. And they let him go. 
said more than one or two unkind things in regard to his reverence. Yet people who knew him loved the guy. Proper gentleman he was, courteous manner, good birth, shrewd wit. But old Phil thought pride was of great hindrance to his holiness. To counteract this, my man would put on this nice, neat, pressed black cassock, turn it inside out, put on these big, floppy white shoes, this white hat, and head outside. And with delight in bystanders just getting a kick out of their parish priest just strolling through Rome. Not giving a heck! One time, he was invited to this elegant dinner party. Only the swankiest, you know, the who's who in the zoo sort of thing. All the hoity-toity types. Money bags for jingling. So what does Philip Neary do? He rocks up with half his beard gone! Shaved right off! If Philip Neary had to deal with the person in hysteria, you know, freaking out. Here is Earth, they are them. Well, he had a very interesting way of dealing with them. He would just... <clears throat> give him the old five-finger how do you do? Good and proper! He would literally spend hours in the confessional. Just smack a demon. If there's one thing demons don't like, it's confession. Get yourself to the box! There's acres more of this stuff. Story after story after story, and they're hilarious. If you're interested in old Phil, read this book. Top notch. Now this is just old Tab's reflection, so take it with a grain of salt. Philip Neary is the patron saint of divine joy, and two of his ribs were broken over his heart. What better symbol of pain of the heart is there than that? And isn't that what feeling downcast is? Feeling worthless, feeling unloved, depressed, losing a loved one. Isn't it all pain of the heart? If you're feeling like this, hit this dude up. Because he may be the dorkiest of all saints, but there's a lot of power and love behind that dork, and he is itching. Has heart for days. Also, help old Tabs out and give the story one of these. Comment below on your favorite part, or if there's a particular saint you'd like to see. Like, subscribe, share, get the word out. Cause old Tabs needs help letting people know about this dude. Tabish. Phil? Take that, you old sausage. Nope. She I made that crack about the sausage. That was a poor life choice. Mistakes were made. Big dicey.